One timers here, Matt and Justin, talking about the United States of America, a recap of what the U.S. men's national team did in the World Cup here in Brazil uh, for the for 2014. Um, an interesting uh, era run, really, Matt, because uh, kind of the way I feel, it, you know, we made the round of 16. Uh, we played. We didn't get blown out any games. We, you know, we played fairly well, but at the same time, just kind of a bitter taste in my mouth ever since uh, that late goal by Portugal in which we drew. I think our team played well overall. I mean, you got to be honest with you. Um, our team, you never really are disappointed in the effort. The effort isn't always, it seems like it's always there with our team, which is great to see. Um, and some young guys stepped up. Clinton made some uh, boldy decisions that people might not have made with Yedlin and even Green come making an appearance. Uh, scoring a goal, but um, I think the, the biggest questions would have to be the team didn't really, it seemed like it was, at the time, it seemed like the team was playing not to lose, but to win and another question that most people had was uh, there was no real backup for Altidore, which you had the point when we initially done the roster um, when the roster went down about was it 20 minutes into the whole World Cup, there was no real backup plan uh, for that Mm-hmm. And Dempsey kind of played where he's not most most effective. So overall, I think it was um, a good effort, um, about as good of a result as you could hope for with the way that we were playing. But obviously, you wish they were still playing no matter what what was going on. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, Klinsman did come up very big. Um, with his decisions, obviously you and I, you know, way back when talked about it, how we didn't understand some of these guys he brought up, but uh, yet some of these guys made a, a, you know, great. They had a great tournament. You know, John Brooks had the the game winner against uh, Ghana. Uh, Julian Green came on and had a great goal. DeAndre Yedlin played fantastic um, for the you know the matches that he played in. Um, so I, you know, it, it, it's. Uh, some of these young guys really did step up, step up, and that's what's exciting. Um, to me, I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, the Ghana game we played. Uh, the thing, the thing that annoys me, is that we. I don't think we played our best soccer at all this entire tournament, and yet we still made the round of sixteen. Um, so it, it's interesting to me because we we played like absolute. In my opinion, we played terrible against Ghana. Um, but yet still got the win. We played our best game of the entire tournament against Portugal, but yet slacked off in the final 10 seconds, and, and Portugal got the equalizer. We didn't play very well against Germany, but still only lost 1-0. And then um, we didn't really, I don't think we really played that well against Belgium, um, but yet uh, I think we played our best soccer against Belgium in the second half of extra time after Green scored because I think there was a moment of rallying where we were like, well, hey, we're, we're back in this right now. And we played great soccer. Back in it. Was that? <laughs> we're back in it, boys. No, oh, yeah, we're back in it. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, uh, I, fun fact, I owe my brother an icy because when Julian Green came on, I told my brother, I said, hey, if Julian Green scores, I'll buy you an icy. And then, like, two minutes later, <laughs> <laughs> Green scored. And I was like, huh, all right. <laughs> but we, I thought, when we talked about Julian Green, and I thought, I'll be able to score a little bit if you were to score the game winner, and that could be kind of quite it. Him the game winner, but. Yeah, not quite the game winner, but he did he did score a, a goal that um, you know proved to put some fight in, in the U.S. I'm really upset that that free kick we had, you know, just didn't quite work out. That was an awesome free kick. Um, where, where you know, I think who was it? Bradley took it. And I think like passed to someone that was all to the side. And they passed it back in to Clint, who peeled off from the wall, and Courtois was just you know just. He was a great goalkeeper. Able to, yeah, he was able to get there in time to make that save. But, um, man, that would have been a fantastic equalizer, especially if we could have won that match in penalties or something like that. Um, but, you know, overall, it, it was a great tournament, you know, uh, for, for us. We, we surprised a lot of people by making uh, making out of the group of death. Um you know, Drew Portugal, you could argue that we should have won that due to the fact that it was such a late equalizer. Uh, beat Ghana, finally. You know, third time's finally the charm to beat Ghana. Um, in the end, we did need a little help from from Ronaldo and company, you know, to at least hold off Ghana. But, um, you know, able to, you know, give Germany a run, really. It, it, I mean, we didn't have really that many 
chances. We did have the chance, I think, at stoppage time, where Bedoya's shot was like blocked by I think Lom or somebody. But the fact is, if, if that could have you know somehow went in, we would have we probably would have tied them because you know they only had the one goal, and then just the late fight we had against Belgium uh, and Tim Howard. My goodness, Whew, what? Well, he, he rose to the occasion all tournament long. It could have been a completely different story if Howard was not be between the posts because, I mean, it, what, 15 or 16 saves against Belgium um, alone? And then he had a, uh, some very huge saves against uh, Germany, Portugal, um, and uh, Ghana for that matter. I just remember the, the one from... Um, the one against Portugal where Nani had a, ripped a shot and it hit off the post... It came right back to Edder, who then had like tried to chip Howard. And Howard is like falling backwards and managed to somehow tap it over the crossbar. Um, how differently that game could have been had we, you know, had that had gone in. So, you know, Tim Howard to me, I, the man of the tournament for our team. I'm sure you, you'll probably agree with me on that. It's hard to really dispute that. He was an absolute piece of the other players that were good. Thing. Then see when he had the moment, he was good. Um, it's kind of at times he um, was kind of disappeared, not that his fault, but just because we didn't have the ball very much. Yeah. Uh, but some other players that were really good was um, I think um, our defense at times had moments. I mean, Bezler had good moments and he had some bad moments. Um, Cameron had some really good moments and some really bad moments. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same, I think Omar, Omar Gonzalez had pretty good when he had the chance. Yeah. But the players that I thought were that really impressed me, I said I mean Jermaine Jones was an animal, uh and I think Beckerman was an animal. I think it was interesting that the guy that everyone said had to be good for us to do well was Michael Bradley. And he on offense didn't really do much. Um, yeah. he did do a great lot of things that people didn't see. I think I think he led the World Cup was the top three of ground cover, so he definitely um hustled back. There were a couple times where I was amazed. We could just eat turn the ball over in the last third and then he'd sprint for 70 yards and fly tackle the ball out of bounds. But I have a question to pose, JT, and I was doing some research and I was thinking about this, this after I was uh, borderline heartbroken after the, uh, <laughs> the Belgian game. And I think we had this conversation I, uh, back in 2009 when the Vikings lost to the, the, uh, the, the football team from New Orleans uh, in the NFC Championship game. My field goal, I, I kind of uh, emotionally was as sad as ever been at a sporting event. Uh, it took it so hard, I, I couldn't talk to anybody in our dorm room in Austin Howard uh, West for about a day. Yeah. And I locked the door, and my parents even called me to talk about the game. I wouldn't even talk to them because I was so sad and I just couldn't talk. So since then, I really worked on trying to realize that only a sport, I'm not even playing, I don't know why I'm taking it so hard, so, and then I, I took, I, and then, happened the Belgium game, and I was so sad, so for Wando, and I, I don't know, I had, instead of being depressed, like I could have been, and had a few adult beverages, <laughs> I decided to just do some research, take a nap and exercise, and thing is that, when I looked at, when I, when I thought about this, I said, I was confused. When you look at it from a, a basic standpoint, we have 300 million people. We produce some of the best athletes. Like if you watch the Olympics, the mm -hmm. best sprinters are normally a lot of times American. The best triathletes are American. We have best, the, some of the best athletes in you know, basketball, football, hockey. We're constantly competing at the best sports. Normal, a lot of times dominating the best sport. And I'm, I was thinking, I was like, why can't we compete with a team like Netherlands? about the size of my home state, Minnesota. I don't understand why can't we just designate one state as hockey state. We can designate Minnesota the, the soccer state, and it can be as good as Netherlands, that's fine with me. Uh, so I looked at the three differences between U.S. soccer and most quote-unquote soccer powers. And some of them we can change, and some of them we can't do anything about, and that's just the way it is. So three, the three main ones are, the main one is competing sports, for you. So when you're a little kid, you're choosing the sport to start playing with and play, or a lot of kids compared to other countries, I'm assuming, in Argentina, in the here you might play hockey in the winter, in Minnesota especially, you might play basketball and baseball and mm -hmm. soccer, you play all four, so you're just kind of a well-rounded athlete. Um, not much you can do about that other than growing the sport. 
Um, and you're always going to have those competition. The second is the interest in soccer, uh, which is something you can grow, obviously, we can get better, but it's kind of hard to do when there's you know, competing sports, you have football, hockey, basketball, etc. The thing that I looked at that we that's way different I've talked to people about when I had foreign exchange students, um, I had a German foreign exchange student as well that went to Germany, who was obviously one of those teams. The, the, the way you play, play soccer at a young age, when you play soccer in Germany, you join a club team in high school and or a little younger, and you play to that team year-round, and you go to school, to class at school, but you play soccer for club FC Hamburg youth team. And I, I read some articles, I did some stuff, and I, I wonder with the college soccer system, is that possibly hurting our, hurting our development for our youth team? I believe they only play 15 to 20 games a season. I'm sure TMDG doesn't have that great weather. I just wonder, is there a better system to promote and train when we have so many great athletes and players can we do better? Yeah, um, I mean, with with the college thing, I do. I'm pretty sure they do do some spring games. Um, it's not a, there's like not as much um, many games as there is like during the normal season. But I do believe that they do still play some spring games when you're in college. Um, I think it is tough because it, you know they they are trying to still get a college education because not everyone wants to play soccer um, professionally after college, um, but. Yeah, I mean, and it, it really is some of the, you know, the United States is just, it, it, there's multiple sto- sports that you can play, and so, so you know, a lot, there's a lot of variety in what you can play as a kid, and up to when you get, you know, then you perfect to a certain sport, and you play that, and I think that is part of the problem for the U.S., um, because other countries, you know, soccer is the main sport that everyone wants to play, so everyone, you know, all, everyone that's talented or athletic, everything, they're going to be playing soccer coming all the way up. Um, another thing too, I want, I do want to point out is um, when you have when you're a smaller country such as Belgium or the Netherlands, um, for you know, use those two as example. Your country's not as big, so it's easier to find those that young talent. You know what I'm saying? The U.S. is so vast, it's so huge, it's sometimes hard to find some of these youngsters that are, are very talented. Um, so it, it's hard to get together a great, talented team when, when you can't even find all the talent in the first place. Um, whereas with smaller countries, it's easier to, you know, because, you know, just, just for instance, by word of mouth, you know, you can start hearing, oh, hey, there's this really good kid that's playing over, you know, in, in this town here, and then soon enough, your, your soccer federation catches wind of it and heads there, and it's like, oh, this guy is very good, you start getting him on the national team. Um, it's, it's very hard to do that uh, just here in America just due to how big it is. Um, but I do think that, the U.S. is making strides in the right direction. Um, I am pretty ex- excited that these young players played very well um, in the first World Cup, especially because those are going to be the guys that we'll see um, in the next, you know, next couple of World Cup cycles. So um, I'm interested to see, you know, how this how this turns out, and I'm hoping that we keep moving in the right direction. Um, it, it's big news to me that. This is the first time we've been in back-to-back knockout stages um, since you know since 1990 when we we ended that 40-year drought and qualified for the World Cup. It, it's been it was you know we make the knockout phase one round, one year and and then the the next World Cup we don't get out of the group and then the next World Cup we get to the knockout stage the next World Cup we don't make it out of the group we made it out of the group we won the group in um, 2010 and then this year we're the runner-up. And made it back to the knockout stage, which is the, you know the first time we've gone back to back knockout stages, and especially the fact that this was the group of death, and yet we somehow made it out as well. Um, I think that's got to you know account for something, and and, and I really do think you know pop, uh, soccer is really taking hold as being much more popular now, and a lot of people are are pulling you know to to watch it, and and I think it will be, you know, there's been a lot of rumors and whatnot that, that Kid Art can possibly lose their World Cup and they would be rewarded to the United States, and I think that would just be huge to help soccer uh, take off even further, because it really took off when we hosted 94, and I think if we get it again, it, it will it'll just be huge. It, it definitely would be uh, great to see, especially since you like participation in American football going down a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the last question that I've had is, um, with all these great soccer powers, they all have, seems like an identity, uh, as a team, like, as a, as a, as a federation. Like, in Brazil, you have the, the, the Samba, Jogo Bonito type soccer. Um, in, in Germany, you kind of big physical, tactical, just, um, machine. Netherlands, you have the total football. In England, you kind of have the, the knock it down the pitch, um, narrow style playing. And I wonder if that's one of our, our weaknesses, um, is that we don't really have an identity as a team. Uh, right now, the identity really is to out hustle every ball and, uh, play well, um, and, and just out hustle and be in the best shape. And I wonder, um, if that's, something that we have to develop or that we will develop. And that, like, I think Clemson is starting to do, but I wonder if it's something that we have to work on. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you there. We don't have a, a full-out identity to say, um, but I do think you're right. Clemson's been starting to implement something here, and I think it might be one of those things where this World Cup we don't just because um, – we have a lot of a lot of uh, like we have a mixture of different players, but with all these young players, he's going to be starting to get more and more of in the couple you know upcoming with the the you know the couple of gold cups that'll uh, be coming up. And if you win one you know the right one, then you can possibly get to the the um, Confederations Cup and then another World Cup. I think it's going to be interesting to see how he can implement a, a lot of these youngsters in and maybe form some sort of identity. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I think he definitely treats the players um, well. He, he makes right decisions, and um, let's let's hope there's some next young kid stars that are coming up too. I think Clinton showed that he, he picks the right people. 